Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for the Idiot Quilter, and this welcome to my weekly vlog, uh, episode 173, for June the 28th, 2022, and hope everybody out there is enjoying the nice summer weather, if you're having nice summer weather. Uh, we have. It's been fairly pleasant lately, which is always nice. Um, so, let's jump right into what I'm going to show you today, and uh, yeah, I just talked about summer weather, and now... I'm showing you Christmas. Yep, I've gotten started on some of my Christmas sewing. Um, I'm on a bit of a run here on making table runners. The four that are there, except for the one closest to the left side, are all the same pattern. I just mixed up the fabric a little bit and the colors. The one on the far right's a little weird looking when you see it in the picture. Um, it doesn't show the pattern as clearly. You have to kind of stare at it. But actually, when you see it in real life, um, it, it does, it's a little easier to see the stars that are in it. But the reason it looks this way is because I decided to do um, two different borders on it. I Well, the outside borders are two different fabrics. Instead of doing a, the same fabric all the way around, I used one halfway around and the other one the other way around. And um, yeah, I'm just experimenting, but when it quilts... Well, as a friend of mine says, it'll quilt out. <laughs> yeah, it, it's fine. It looks better, as I said, in, in real life. And the one that um, is over on the far left side, that one is, you can't see the whole pattern. <clears throat> Excuse me. Frog in my throat. Um, it's called the Twisted Pole, and I showed you the pattern for that a couple of uh, episodes ago. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make a second one of those or not. They're really easy, and the final effect is really nice and you can't see it because I've hidden it behind there uh, but you will see it again uh, once I get these on Lucy and get them all quilted up and uh, bound then I'll show them again to you the final product now have I got anybody in mind for these I do not no I am sort of stockpiling potential Christmas gifts and that's why I start early because I really don't know who's going to get what, um, how many things I might be giving as gifts. And I like to have a few things in reserve for, you know, emergency gifts kind of a thing. You know, that last minute uh, gift idea, you've been invited to something and you don't want to go empty handed. And that's why I'm getting ahead of it all now. And I started yesterday looking at uh, a fairly elaborate uh, embroider embroidery project. And uh, I'll say more about it maybe next week. I'm going through my threads to decide what I'm going to use with it. It's one of those kind of things I've shown you before that are all made in the hoop. Uh, they're tiles, they're a wall hanging, and they're very, very intricate. And because they're so intricate, they take hours and hours and hours and days and days and weeks of time to get together. But the end result is usually always worth it. So it's something I want to get started now and, you know, do a few tiles every week or something like that. There's quite a few in that pattern. And I did mention that pattern last week. I showed it to you called Celestial, uh, what was it? Celestial Season, no, <laughs> that's a salad dressing. Uh, celestial uh, Angels or something like that. And uh, yeah, but I'll say more about that if I get started on it soon and uh, show you it bit by bit. Maybe I should uh, record my progress on it and make that into a separate video. Yeah, potential. We'll see. Okay, so that's what I have been making. But um, remember the Canada table runner that I made and I appliqued the uh, diamond pieces in the center and I wasn't happy with them. I did raw edge applique and I kind of... Um, Oh, what's the word? Kind of got lazy and uh, only did a uh, single stitch in around close to the edge. Yeah, not good because that fabric will unravel uh, each time that it's washed. And eventually, if you washed it enough times, that single stitch line is not going to hold those appliques because, you know, it'll just keep unraveling up to the stitch line and then the stitches will become weak and it'll just let go. So I decided, well, fine, put that one on a back burner, you know, uh, chalk it up to experience. I'm not giving that to anybody. But then I got thinking and I saw a video. I saw a video where a lady is famous for her colorful quilts and things that she makes. Can't remember her name. 
she owns a company. I think she owns something called Colorworks. And uh, she does a lot of raw edge applique. And what she does is she, she said that she what she hated is she get all her applique on her piece and then she go to quilt it. And she had to, you know, quilt around the appliques. Um, and she said that was a pain in the butt. So one day she decided, well, what if she just did all of her quilting first before she applied the appliques, then put on the appliques? Now, yes, her stitches will come through to the backing fabric, but she says she uses a really, I think she used a monofilament um, thread for it, so you really didn't see that, and that made life a little easier. So I thought, well, why don't I apply that principle to this table runner? And although I wasn't going to use monofilament thread, I could have. I don't think I have any. Um, should look into getting a spool of that. Um, but uh, I thought I'd give it a try, just with a, a simple, small blanket stitch. And because the backing on that table runner is a red fabric, I decided to use in my bobbin red uh, thread and I use sort of a, a light tan to blend in with the um, applique diamonds on the front and I did that I went around I did a little practice piece first to see how it would look and I thought you know this is okay if anything if people notice those stitches on the back it looks like a decorative element it's meant looks like it's meant to be there so I went ahead and did it and it worked it looks great and uh so I am going to give it as a gift. Now, <laughs> just when I thought I was done with this, I downloaded yesterday a free pattern for a maple leaf. Um, it's done by Creative Kiwi. They have a lot of freebies they give out every now and then. And they were doing sort of a Canada Day theme. They're in New Zealand. So, but that was nice of them to think of us. So I, uh, <clears throat> again, clearing my throat, sorry. Um, so I downloaded it. Actually, the, the maple leaf wasn't free. The base for a Canadian flag, I can show you. This part was free. It's pretty simple in the hoop. But the maple leaf that goes in the center of it, um, which you can't see in this picture, but there are veins on it and things, a little bit more elaborate than it looks here, uh, was $3. It was on sale. $3 Canadian. Well, really, that's nothing. So I downloaded that, and I'm thinking of doing that that maple leaf we'll see how long it takes to do i think it's an in it is an in the hoop applique kind of thing so it's fabric as well as embroidery stitching and i might applique that to the center of each diamond yes because i think it might just be that little touch that makes the table runner stand out a little bit more so that's going to be my project today after i get finished doing my video here so, yep, there's always something to do. Okay, so speaking of something to do, I am notorious for not labeling my quilts and things. And I know, I know you're all going to say it. No, you must do that. It's, you know, documentation. It's the providence for something you've made 100 years down the road and all that kind of stuff. Well, I don't know if anybody's going to care about anything that I made 100 years in the future. But nevertheless... I, I just, because you got to make labels, right? And what I was doing to make labels was I, I was doing them on my embroidery machine. They look good. They're nice and everything like that. But Lynn Reinhardt of Cotton Art Studio, when I did my interview with her a few weeks ago, we got talking about labels. And she's a great proponent for, you know, making sure that you label a quilt. And uh, she suggested, why don't you just take the logo you use and design it in spoon flour and have them print you off uh, your labels on a big piece of fabric. And I thought, that's a brilliant idea. So I did that. So let me show you what those look like. If I can get my picture up here. There you go. I have a meter of these labels and all that's my logo for the idiot quilter. Actually, I should turn that the other way. Um, let's see if I can, because that's really not the way it's going to go. That's the way uh, they go. And um, they're a little bigger than I thought they were going to be, but that's okay. Um, I'll just cut them out of that. And 
on that part it says create it with my name. Well, I left that space a little bigger because now I can take a, a fabric marker or whatever and I can write a date into that as well. I got quite a few uh, labels like right there on a quarter of the meter. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 16. So it's 30, about 64 labels. That'll do me for a while. And the best part is now that it's already there on the Spoonflower site, if I need some more, I can just simply go in and order more. It took a while to come from Spoonflower because, you know, uh, they have to print them and everything. And then it's coming up from the States to Canada. And they tell you this. And I picked the cheapest way to deliver it, which cost me about $3.95. Um, I mean, the overall for the whole thing here, the labels and whatnot. And because I made the design, they give you a little bit of a discount. It cost me about $22 Canadian, including the shipping and everything. So I don't think that's really a bad price. And I can't make them that fast. If I made them on an embroidery machine, they take quite a while to do. Um, so yeah, so I think this is going to work out really well. And of course, they are completely washable as well. So yeah, that was a great suggestion. And I thank Lynn Reinhardt for that suggestion. Okay, <clears throat> so I have got a demo for you this week, which is about how I store my quilts. Now, I have talked about storing my quilts before, and basically my system for storing quilts was fold them up and throw them on the guest room bed. Well, you look into the guest room and it looks like a disaster. I mean, everything's folded up neatly, but it's just piled high on the bed. And we actually have to use that room very soon, uh, come another weekend's time. Not this one, the one after. We have friends coming to spend the weekend. And they need the bed. So I have to relocate the quilts. So I thought, you know, where can I put the quilts uh, where I can easily see what I have and they're in a safe, dry place. And yeah, so the Lucy room, the room where my long arm is now also stores my quilts. So I'm going to show you. Um, how I'm storing my quilts. And I'm also going to show you how they are displayed in various parts of my house. And near the end of the vi little video, I have a um, statistic about my quilt number. So I'm going to insert that for you here now. So I thought I'd show you where all my quilts are located in my house. I just did some relocating and I'll show you that in a minute. But I have pretty much every wall space in this house is filled with a quilt. Down here alone in my sewing area and going right up the stairs. And you can see there's one on the wall there and one on the deacon's bench. There are two banners on the doors outside. And this is a little banner that I did have on a door outside, but I decided to hang it there. And in this room, my very first attempt at a quilt. And then some table runners, actually these were wall hangings that I made for my mother when she was in the nursing home, hung them up on her wardrobe doors. There's another one over here as well. Now there is a quilt upstairs on our bed and I have another wall hanging up there. Actually one, two, two wall hangings in the bedroom, one on the bed as I said. Then there is a wall hanging in the guest bedroom and I used to keep all my other quilts in the guest bedroom but I'm going to show you where those are right now but let's go into the rec room let's put some light on and so you can see there is a quilt there a wall hanging another wall hanging and then we have a quilt on the back of that chair and we have a quilt on the back of this chair and there's a small quilt on the back of this chair and that tablecloth I made as well. It's a quilted tablecloth. Then, of course, I have a table runner on that table. And then there's a bunch on the ladder rack right here. These are some of my earlier attempts at uh, small pieces. And now I'll show you where the bulk of my quilts are stored. So we go into the Lucy room. Put a little light on. 
There is one hanging out in the shelf that used or on the wall. That one used to go out its full size, but I decided to relocate my threads so I could find them easier and they look pretty there. And now here's where all the quilts that were up on the guest bedroom now reside. I just rearranged this about an hour ago because I've got guests coming in July and they need a guest bed. So I thought, well, it was getting really cluttered in that guest bedroom. So I have refolded these quilts, uh, tried to do it sort of by size. And so they're all here as well. So yeah, I have quilts everywhere in this house, as you can see. So how many pieces are they? And when I say pieces, I mean quilts, table runners, wall hangings. I even have them on my screensaver, on my computer. And I take a picture of every one of my quilts when they're done. And uh, makes kind of a neat screensaver. Um, but I did some statistics. And let's see, here are my notes. I have 14 pieces on the ladder rack. I have um, 28 hanging on walls in and around the house. I have, and that includes ones that are also draped over couches. And on those tapes you just saw, I have 45 pieces there. Pieces means banners, table runners, and quilts. Most of them are quilts uh, in various sizes, everything from a throw or lap, to, lap uh, quilt right up to queen size quilt. So yeah, I've been busy. So in total, that gives me 89 quilted pieces that I have made since I started quilting about, well, what's it now, four, maybe going on five years ago. I've been very productive and there's no, and that doesn't even count pieces like these up here. And it doesn't count the quilts that I have given away either. So really my 89 is probably more like about 95. Yeah, I've been busy. Now I made another video last week for you as well. And this one I'm going to put up as a separate video on YouTube under the Idiot Quilter Presents. And this is about how I make these videos. I've had a few people ask me what I use for equipment or how I put everything together. Now I'll tell you right off the bat, I am not a professional and I'm not that sophisticated in the way I make my videos. And you go to yourself, not that sophisticated. Oh, wow. Guess. Okay. But I thought I'd show you how I make the videos and how I put together and what the equipment is that I use in my whole procedure in that. So I did a little behind the scenes video about that and here's a little teaser for that video i can switch to my overhead camera this is the one that i use a lot when i'm on zoom and i'll show you there's the camera right there those are lights actually i don't have my lights turned on i probably should turn my lights on so i just have there we go blind you and there's one over here a very sophisticated system can't you tell and these are lights that i bought from amazon and uh amazon let me switch here and, and they were not that expensive but they do give me a little better lighting in this in this situation so i was showing you that camera that was over there and that's the one that when i push the button here switches me over to this view so you can see uh, when I sit behind my sewing machine, um, people can see me there. Or if I'm doing something on the table. Now I have another camera that I seldom use and I don't know if I can switch over to it. Oh yes, here it is. It's one I call above. And now you get an above view and that camera is way up there. You probably can't see it. That little blue glow on that. That's my overhead shot. Um, and that's what you're seeing here. Now, my idea for that was if I was doing demos, you'd see it better. But that camera doesn't have a really good focus for getting up close. So I don't use it very often. So I hope you'll enjoy that video. I kind of had fun making it as well. And I also learned that, yeah, the way I make videos is probably a little bit more complicated than it needs to be. So, you know, maybe over time, 
maybe with a little bit more investment into more sophisticated equipment, I can do a better job. Okay, so subscribers quilt of the week. I do have one for you. This comes from Carol. And I was just thinking, I'm looking at my notes right now and it says I've got nothing, but I do. At the last minute, I got an email from Carol and she sent me some pictures of her great creations. Thank you, Carol. You saved me this week. And please, I, I'm out. I need your creations to feature. And remember, it, they don't have to necessarily be quilts. They can be anything that you have made, anything at all, any piece of artwork, any piece of fiber art, any knitting, crocheting, paper crafting, whatever. I'll take it all and just send me one or two pictures and a very brief blurb, 50 words or less, and I'll feature you on here. But right now, I'm featuring Carol. This week's subscribers' quilts and creations come from a young lady named Carol. And Carol lives in, I believe, San Diego, California. And she writes this. Uh, the quilt is one I designed and made as a gift. The picture of the lady is an acrylic painting I'm working on, and the collage is from one of my many art journals I make. I have over 25 art journals that I designed and made, each one different. I tell you a little, to tell you a little bit about myself, been making quilts since 1995, taught myself how to quilt and design my own patterns. I donate quilts to unwed mothers and fathers, started the first African-American quilt guild here in San Diego, California. I make altered book jur art journals, handmade books, art journals, and so many other arts and crafts. Yeah, well, these are beautiful creations, and I love the variety of your creative talent. Um, all of these are really lovely and unique creations. And so thank you, Carol, so much for sharing those with us. And I hope we see more of your work in the future. And that takes me to the YouTube channel of the week. Now, this is one that was recommended to me by one of my subscribers, uh, Dana, who lives out in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada. And uh, Dan and I are, well, Dan is a little bit more than a subscriber. We're friends as well. Uh, but anyways, she knew that I was struggling with hemming a pair of jeans. And if you remember, I told you the story about breaking my machine, basically, by trying to hem these jeans on it because I was an idiot. Um, but she sent me this link to a video clip uh, from somebody that goes by the name of, or the YouTube channel goes by the name of Thuey. T-H-U-Y. I'm not sure if I'm saying it right. But she had, this person who did, did this video, had a really unique way to hem jeans. So that made me interested in her other videos. So I've watched several of her videos. And they are very, very good. Very informative. And show you some things that you may not already know or things how to do things that you find complicated in an easier format so here's my review of thuey sewing this week's youtube channel of the week is one i stumbled across by accident when i saw or was actually told by one of my subscribers to check out a video about uh, hemming jeans in a very unique way and this came from this site, which is called, I think it's Thuey Sewing. Sorry if I've mispronounced that. But uh, she has a really different bend on doing certain types of sewing. Now you can see on her front page of Thuey Sewing that you have, have you ever seen the way to sew a reversible vest? Do you know how to sew a spaghetti strap top? Five sewing tips and tricks that will make you sew I don't know, better? <laughs> Does it tell me? No, it doesn't. Uh, oh, there it is. Let me see what it really is. Uh, that will make you sew better, part three. So she has a lot of tips and tricks, and it looks like tutorials as well. Um, so she has them laid out in playlists, sewing tips and tricks, DIY. Uh, let's just go up to her playlists and see DIY shorts, DIY sewing, DIY pants, DIY clothes for little girls, DIY little girls dresses, uh, skirts, making patterns, tops. So this is definitely ge geared towards those people who sew gar garments. And uh, yeah, I found that the video that she showed for uh, hemming jeans was very, very um, clear. Uh, very professionally done video, uh, easy to follow. 
So I am assuming that most of her videos are that way as well. Now I have a confession to make. I haven't gone in and extensively checked out uh, all of her videos because it's garment sewing and I don't do that. But I know many of you do. So this might be a site you'll find uh, very, very uh, informative, interesting, and you'll probably learn something from it. So that takes me to what's on my vision board. And this is another bag, and it's a bag by Annie. Great patterns. You've heard me say this before, but they really, really are. And this is one that has been sitting there for a while. I have all the, the equipment I need to make this bag. I just haven't got to it yet. And that's called A Place for Everything 2.0 Bag by Annie. So here's my review of that pattern. This week's pattern from my vision board is another bag. And I've got several of these by Annie that are sitting waiting to be made. And like I said last week, I sometimes am intimidated by what I see in these patterns. But there is no need to be intimidated by a by Annie bag because these instructions are second to none in clarity. And this is the particular bag that I want to make. It's called a place for everything 2.0. 2.0 because this is an improved version of this original design by Annie. And I have linked below where you can pick it up for a $9.95 uh, American uh, price. And these video these patterns are always well worth the price they're not that expensive and for five dollars more you can get an add-on video tutorial uh with most of these patterns and i strongly recommend that you pay the extra five dollars and get the add-on video tutorial because just like the patterns themselves the videos are very clearly uh presented and definitely are a help when you're doing a project on this scale so I'm looking forward to doing this bag by Annie, a place for everything. And here are some pictures and shots of what they could look like. Um, you know, they're a beautiful bag uh, and picking out fabric that you like is going to make it even nicer. But there's the little touches, the extra pockets, as you can see on the outside of this bag, uh, the little pieces of hardware as well. They just help to make the bag look very professional. Here you can see the inside of the bag, lots of pockets, more zippers. Uh, don't be intimidated by putting in zippers in these projects because, again, by Annie shows you step by step how to do it, and her instructions are very clear. Here's another variation. Um, this would be a bag that would be great to take to a retreat or to a class. It's got lots of room to hold your stuff. But, you know, I think it's versatile enough that you could use it as uh, a carry-on bag uh, for a flight or something like that. So I'm looking forward to making this bag at some point in time. I got to get the lead out and get on with these projects because these bags are starting to pile up. Now, this would be the spot where I'd stick in a teaser for an interview that I have done in the past week. Uh, no teaser because there's no interviews. I am out of interviews. I have sent out a couple of feelers to individuals but I'm not getting any response back from them. I don't know if they think I'm a quack or they just figure it's not worth their effort or time or whatever. So I'm still looking for suggestions, but you've heard me say it before. If you give me a suggestion, I also need some contact information. I mean, I can do a certain amount of investigation, um, but you know, so if you know of somebody that you think I should interview on here, um, and if you've got some contact information for them, please send that along to me as an email and I will investigate it further and hopefully be able to do an interview. Um, but of course, there's always you. I always say this. I don't get any response. So if you enjoy those interviews, help me. <laughs> That's all I can say is help me. OK, that takes me to my online fabric store. Uh, quilting store of the week. This was suggested to me by um, a subscriber. It's called Hamels Fabrics. They are Canadian, of course, because uh, that's the stores that I review are Canadian stores, and they're out in British Columbia. So here's my review of Hamels Fabrics.
This week's online quilt store was recommended to me by one of my subscribers. This is one I have never come across before. So this is my first time really taking a close look at it. It's called Hamels Fabrics and it is in uh, British Columbia. I'm not exactly sure where in British Columbia, but maybe we'll discover that in a moment. But here is their front page. Um, Right off the bat, I'm really liking their design. At the top, it's telling me free shipping for Canadian order, order, orders over $199. Um, some exceptions, it says, but I guess you can check that out. Um, and we have some quickie menus here. Sale fabrics, new arrivals, pre-cuts, fabrics, notions, gift certificates. And they have a newsletter as well that you can sign up for. And then what's new? So here's a quickie look. Uh, Tilda Embroidery Flower Quilt Kit. Uh, Ombre Galaxy Metallic Ombre Star Quilt Star Gazer. Little problem here getting my tongue around that. Um, some panels, some other quilts and kits. Running yardage. That's kind of interesting. Luminosity. And yeah. So and then featured products. So lots of here, lots of things right here on the front page to capture your interest. But let's drop right into fabrics, shall we? And see what the their prices are. Well, I like this left hand index, which breaks down uh, fabrics by theme and by collections and by designer um, all on here, which is very, very nice. Uh, let's just take a look here. Uh, brand. Let's look at Northcott because that's the one I use pretty much as my standard for things. Okay, they've got fabric seems to be $12.98. I'm assuming that's either by a yard or by a meter. We'll check that out in a minute. And since these prices are in Canadian, that is really good. That's got it. Oh, I have a feeling that's only half a meter. Let's check it out, shall we? Let's just pick one. And let's see. Uh, do they explain what this is in? I do not see an explanation yet. Okay. If it truly is 1298 Canadian for a full meter or yard, that is absolutely fantastic. But I'm not sure. So let's explore things a little further. Let's take a look at they've got a shop by category. Okay, let's put it in a cart and see what we've got. Proceed to check out. Okay, that's not really telling me. But I'm going to assume, I'm just shipping and policies, okay, shipping information. Well, we're going to come to this eventually. Um, $14.99 for orders under $199. That is not bad. And of course, free shipping for over $199. Um, They have tracking with a large order, but not a smaller one. They will ship uh, express posts for an extra fee. And they have American prices. So up to $100 and more, 50 bucks. Yeah, much more expensive uh, to ship it to the States. Um, I'm just looking here to see if they have anything about... Nope, I'm not finding anything about the fabric, but I think, looking at it, that that is by the um, by the meter or yard, and that's really good price. Um, let's take a look at their batting. Let's see. Well, if we go back into fabrics for just a second, see if there's anything here that I may have missed. Oh, now not all their prices are that. Okay. 
yeah, all right. This now confirms for me that this is by the meter or yard. And yeah, prints are more expensive. Well, these are batiks. Okay, batiks are almost $20 a meter or yard. Um, let's, let's just for fun, take a look at a category that says 10 to $25. Okay, so now we're getting into the prints and batiks again. Yeah. So some things are maybe twelve ninety eight. Looks like they're on sale. Uh, when you see that, but the average price looks like around nineteen ninety eight. Although that one's a little bit more. Okay, and just take a look at what they've got in their seasonal, uh, holiday and winter. Just taking a look to see if they've got any Christmas fabrics yet. A uh, little bit. They're more expensive. They're almost $21 a yard or a meter. Okay, and it looks like it's uh, whatever they have in stock from last year when it comes to Christmas, which, yeah, it's still early. So that's not a, a problem for me. Um, What else is in there? Shopping online, books, batting. Let's take a look at their batting. Uh, they have Hobbs. 100% cotton and an 80-20 cotton blend. And warm and natural, warm and white, and black. Okay, so they've got probably the most popular battings. Uh, I didn't want the black, though. Let me go back here. And that seems to be all they have. Hmm. Let's try the 100% cotton, warm and natural. Okay, so really not a huge selection of batting. It looks like they're out of 80 by 20 uh, batting as well. So let's go back to their store. And let's see, notions. Well, we'll check their notions probably. Yeah, pretty much standard applique kits. Yeah, gloves. So. Yeah, standard kind of things you would expect in Notions. Uh, and they on the sidebar, they show you all the different things that they do have there listed. Very easy to nav navigate around this uh, web page, which I like. Um, what we got in the clearance section? Well, we have 60% off. Okay, so twelve ninety eight seems to be the going price on some of those. Some of these are quite nice. Uh, so is that sixty percent off? What's sixty percent off? Well, here we go. So some good prices to be had here. Uh, although everything I'm seeing in here, that's interesting. Don't know what I'd do with it, but it's interesting. Um. Oh, well, they have a lot of pages of stuff, so yeah, it might be something in there. All right, let's go back to the shop online. And let's see, a books, interfacing, patterns, pre-cuts. Let's check out their pre-cuts. Charm squares, fat quarter bundles, honey buns, jelly rolls. Let's check out the jelly rolls. Jelly Roll prices, standard. No great bargain there. It's just your average price. And not a lot to choose from in that. But they do have pre-cuts. It would be worth checking that out a little bit more if you're interested in getting some pre-cuts. And let's take a look at something else. Um, quilt kits. And... They have them by brand. There's 33 different quilt kits. So, yeah, bags as well. And go back onto the shop online and let's take a look at patterns. Uh, they have 4,802 patterns. Okay, so they have patterns coming out of their yin yang. 
and it looks here by their categories like they've got quite a bit. Let's take a look at uh, quilting. Since I've been looking at quilting patterns is for Christmas. Standard pricing. Yeah, lots. Lots to choose from. Okay, now they do have a storefront. And uh, they're in, I'm not sure how to say it. Is it Super Suki, BC? Uh, where I'm not sure in BC where that is. Never been there, but okay. And so that's your storefront. And contact us. And there's their address and everything you need to know right there and how to get there. Okay, so. My overall impression of Hamble's Fabrics, I think it's worth definitely looking into in more detail. I think they have a good selection. Uh, I love the layout of their page. Very easy to navigate uh, in. And prices are pretty much standard. They're right kind of in the middle right now as far as fabric prices are concerned. So that's Hamble's Fabrics out in BC, Canada. You might want to check it out. So just before we finish up this week's episode, again, a reminder about the International Stitch Marathon taking place on July the 22nd, which is a Friday. So it's coming up soon, sooner than you think. And uh, it's a 12 hour work on whatever you want to work on kind of thing. Uh, that's about all the details I have about it. Uh, there are details in the show notes uh, below. And there are about 10 of us or so that are co-hosting this event during the day. Um, so here is a, an introduction of one of our hosts, Future Cat. You may be familiar with Future Cat because this person lives in New Zealand and I have interviewed Future Cat uh, a few weeks ago. So you may have seen that interview. A uh, very interesting person. Um, so here's my little blurb about Future Cat, one of the co-hosts for the International Stitch Marathon. Another one of the co-hosts for the International Stitch Marathon is Future Cat. Future Cat is somebody that I have already interviewed before, so you may have seen that interview. And Future Cat it also has a YouTube channel that you might be interested in seeing, and I've also reviewed. Uh, Future Cat does not have a um introductory video about themselves but i am sure if you explore it a little bit you'll get a real future for a real feeling sorry for what future cat is all about so another co-host for the international stitch marathon check future cat out and speaking of events well at the end of this week, we are into July. And so the first Wednesday of July is July the 6th. So that's next week, one week from this Wednesday. And uh, yeah, it's time for Craft and Chat. How time flies. Really, just seems like yesterday that we had a Craft and Chat, but it wasn't. So all are welcome to join us for that. The Zoom link for it is uh, listed below. Starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Time, my time zone. and we work on whatever we want to work on for a few hours there and have nice conversation. And it's great inspiration for me, for everybody else. We all learn something from each other and it's just fun. Just fun. I'm looking forward to it. I always look forward to it. So that's July the 6th, starting at 1 p.m. <clears throat> I'm getting all choked up thinking about it. Um, starting at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we run until approximately 4 o'clock or so. Um, so I hope you can join us. And for those of you that are on my mailing list for it, I expect uh, an email uh, towards the end of this week with the Zoom link in that email for you. But all are welcome. Okay, all are welcome. You don't have to be on my mailing list to come. Okay, so that takes me to the end of this week's uh, episode. I hope you have a good week. I hope you're feeling in a creative mood. I know it's hard to stay indoors if the weather's really nice and so so why not relocate your sewing machine outdoors as long as it's not raining of course can be done i have done it before in fact 
I was toying with the idea of doing it today, but right now the temp well, it's 12 degrees. It was three, three degrees when I first got up this morning. So the temperature is going up and I might just do that. We'll wait and see. Okay. We'll see you next week. Bye for now.